Going back to the top of the engine now, it's time to install our valve lifters. What we want to first do is take a nice blob of cam lube and just lay it somewhere up here in the block. By taking our lifter and using an oil can with a thin nozzle on it, we can insert this nozzle into the oiling hole of the lifter. If we watch the top end of the lifter where the push rod of contact and we start pumping oil in, we'll notice the oil comes up and around the valve. At this point, the lifter is almost completely filled with oil. Now we can dip the bottom of our lifter into our blob of assembly lube, getting a good chunk of it on the bottom, and squirting a little oil around the sides of the lifter. Now we can install the lifter in the lifter bore. It's always good to move the lifter up and down a few times and twist it gently as we install it to spread the lube and the oil around the bore. Pushing the lifter all the way down, we're completely installed. We should repeat this process with all 16 lifters. There are traditionally two types of cylinder head gaskets. They are the original steel shim type gasket, which is solid metal, and the composition type gasket, which is of two different types. You have a type that has to be retorqued after the engine has been heated and cooled several times, and the type that we will use, which is a more modern gasket, which no retorquing is required. On both of these gaskets, there is a surface that is supposed to go onto the block and another face that which contacts a cylinder head. If we look at our composition type gasket, we will notice that they have actually marked the gasket for us this side up. Another way to tell on the composition gasket is by looking between the area that would be between your cylinders. On the top side of the gasket, you can see where this metal sealing bead is rolled over and runs closely together. If we look at the block side of the gasket in the same area, we can see that this metal band extends completely across the gasket. Taking a look at the steel shim gasket, we'll notice a raised sealing bead which runs around all the cylinders, bolt holes, water passages. This raised bead goes towards the cylinder head and away from the block. Before we install the head gasket, we need to thoroughly clean the block surface with paper towels and brake clean. Also check the height of the dowel pins. They should be no higher than 3 sixteenths of an inch. Now that we know that our dowel pins are at the proper height, we can install our gasket with a proper side up by placing these alignment holes over the studs. This will hold our gasket in place for us in improper alignment to the block. We on. can now mount the cylinder head to the block. And by moving it around, we'll eventually get it to drop down on the dowel pins. We tap it down and make sure it's held securely by the pins for us. We're just going to dip and roll the bolt in the compound and wipe it on the side of the can so we don't have an excess amount. We want to definitely coat the threads completely. Now we'll just install the bolts in the holes and start them in place. Also, before the bolt head seats against the cylinder head, we want to put some oil in the contact area so that the underside of the head of the bolt will not score against the, the head, keeping us from getting an accurate torque reading. There is a definite sequence to tightening the bolts. On a small block Chevy, the sequence is this. You start with the center bolt under the valve cover. That's bolt number one. There are 17 bolts all together. This would be bolt number two. Number three is going to be along the lower edge of the block. Number four next to it. Then five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. Once again, starting with bolt number one, we're going to start with just 25 pounds and continue to do the entire tightening sequence at 25 pounds. Once we finish this sequence at 25, we'll go back again and increase 
the sequence to 50 pounds and then go to our full 65 pounds final torque. As mentioned earlier, then we'll go back over the pattern. And even after we finish going back over the pattern, it's always advisable to recheck them all once again, especially the first bolts that you started with. They will be most susceptible to now be having need to be retightened. We've installed hardened guide plates and screw-in studs. Our factory has before did not have the guide plate and they had a pressed-in type stud. These studs are superior because one they are stronger and more stable and also under higher RPM and spring loads the stud will not tend to pull itself up out of the head and give you an improper valve adjustment. The guide plates are also beneficial because they aid in locating the push rod in relationship to the center line of the rocker arm, the stud, and the valve. The valves, we're going to want to take the push rod gently between our thumb and index finger and rotate it as we tighten the rocker arm. As we tighten the rocker arm and gently rotating the push rod, when we achieve zero lash, the push rod is going to want to stop spinning. At this point, we know we have zero lash and we can complete our valve adjustment. We want to fill the push rod with oil. This is when we do it. Now we're going to pump our oil in. If you notice, the oil is going to be flooding this area. When it does, we want to reinsert the push rod into the cup of the lifter. This is the factory style stamped steel rocker arm. This is the area the push rod seats in. This is where it pivots on the rocker arm ball on the rocker arm stud, and this area contacts the valve. We have opted to use an aftermarket type rocker arm. They're of superior strength and design, and also incorporate a rollerized tip that engages the valve stem. This rollerized tip will greatly increase valve stem and guide life. It will also give us better, more accurate valve train geometry, and give us a little more power. What we want to do at this time is put a generous amount on the end of our push rod, on our valve stem, on our rocker arm stud threads, and a good coating in the area that our pivot ball will make contact with. The reason that we've lubricated the threads in this case is because this type of rocker arm comes with what they call an interference nut. We can continue now to tighten this nut, watching the lifter until that plunger just starts to move down. After you've completed installing all the push rod and rocker arm assemblies, we want to now take our wrench and turn the crankshaft one quarter turn. Well, now we've rotated the crankshaft approximately a quarter turn. We have also changed our lifter position on some of these assemblies. Some assemblies now will be loose and others will have more tension on them. We want to concentrate on the loose ones. Those are going to be all the ones that by lifting up on the push rod we see have play in them. They're loose. So as we did before, we want to start turning this nut down, tightening it, until we've removed all that looseness and that can be determined again by either moving our assembly up and down as we tighten it, spinning the push rod gently as we mentioned earlier, and or watching the plunger in the lifter until it starts to move. Now we've achieved zero lash on this rocker arm assembly. This procedure must re be repeated to find all the loose ones. And now we'll show you a foolproof way to accurately adjust valves on any camshaft operated engine. On any given cylinder, when the intake valve has completely opened and starts to close, we, we will be assured that the lifter of the exhaust valve is on what is called the base circle of the cam. 
That means at this point, this valve will definitely be closed. At this point, we can adjust the exhaust valve. Consequently, when the exhaust valve starts to open, we can accurately set our intake valve assembly. This looks like this. Once again, on this engine, this will be our exhaust valve. This will be our intake valve. As we rotate the crankshaft in direction of the running rotation of the engine, we notice now the exhaust valve is starting to open. Now we can set our intake valve. By grasping the push rod again and spinning it gently, if there is tension on it, we'll first need to back off the rock arm adjusting nut until we have just a little bit of play. Now by gently spinning the push rod, we'll tighten down on the rocker arm nut, but the plunger in the lifter has not started to move. At this point, my push rod wanted to stop turning. We have achieved zero lash on this rocker arm now. If you feel you've over tightened at this point, double check yourself. Back it off, and as you back it off, rotate the push rod. You should, if the push rod starts to rotate freely, as soon as you start backing off the nut, you are in the right position. If it doesn't free up when you initially back off the nut, continue backing it off until it does. Now reverse the procedure, and once again, start tightening the nut down until the push rod stops turning. At this point, we have successfully achieved zero lash in accurate fashion. Now we want to pay attention to the position of our wrench in relationship to our rocker arm, the head, or any other fixed point. Now we can finish our final adjustment by going either a half turn, an eighth of a turn, or up to a full turn, depending on the recommendations of our lifter manufacturer. In our case, we're going to go a half turn, and now our valve is permanently adjusted. We won't have to take our rocker arm covers off after the engine's been run and readjust them and make a mess with oil everywhere. Now, we can continue rotating the crankshaft, and we'll notice our bus valve has gone to a complete open position, and now it's closing. We also notice at this point our intake valve is starting to open. We'll continue rotating the engine until it's reached its full open position and just starts to close. Now, repeating the same procedure we used on adjusting the intake valve, we can accurately adjust our exhaust valve. At this point, I have too much preload on the push rod. So I need to back off the nut until it's free. I'll tighten the nut until I get the push rod at zero lash, where it just stops wanting to spin freely. And again, noting relationship of my ratchet wrench to any fixed point, I will tighten the nut another half turn. This cylinder set is now properly adjusted, and we can repeat the procedure throughout all the rocker arm assemblies on the engine. As we mentioned before adjusting our valves, we're in, we have incorporated a hydraulic camshaft. However, if you are using a solid lifter camshaft, we would adjust the valves in the exact same manner with this exception. Instead of putting preload on your rocker arms, you want to tighten them down just to the point where you have a slight bit of free play. At that point, by rotating the crankshaft in the same manner we did, to ascertain which valve should be adjusted, we're going to, instead of coming down to zero lash and continuing to tighten our nut for a half or a to a full turn, we're going to use our feeler gauges once again. Looking in your specification for your camshaft, they'll tell you the amount of valve clearance that should be set into both the intake and exhaust. This clearance is set between the tip of the rocker arm and a valve stem. At this point, we have our intake valve starting to close so we can go and set our exhaust valve. By taking the required thickness feeler gauge, 
and putting it between the tip of our rocker arm and a valve stem, we'll take our wrench and slowly tighten the nut, moving our shim in and out. When we've achieved proper valve lash, we will feel a slight drag on our feeler gauge. Also notice, with the roller tip rocker, we'll also start getting the roller tip to roll freely. There should, look, once again, when you've achieved proper lash, you'll get a slight drag on your feeler gauge. This process should be repeated for all rocker arm assemblies. 